<laughs> Sometimes we just have that <laughs> the challenges of life, but we stay with it and hopefully we get through it all. We just bless your holy name, Lord. Yeah. All right. So, hope everyone's doing okay. If you're still out there. <laughs> We've been having quite the warfare at times with the things that are technical. Especially when the word of the Lord is coming about that which <laughs> that which we are empowered with. The enemy certainly does not want us to know that. So we do bless you, Lord, even though with all the difficulties, we still we will forge ahead. <laughs> As the word says, you can run through a troop and leap over a wall. And that's what we're doing today. And we say, Lord, we just give you blessings and honor, Father. No matter what comes our way, you are always here with us, Lord. And Lord, you always find literally sometimes the right button to push. <laughs> we just bless your holy name. We just bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord all that you're doing today. We just lift up our hands and we begin to bless your holy name because you are worthy of all praise. obstacles like at the beginning here and we just say glory to you Lord there is so much that is in our so much that is in our arsenal there's so much that's there so much that God does go up with the shout and the Lord with the sound of the trumpet and we do overcome by the blood of of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Thank you, Father. So we just take a moment, come into His presence, into that heavenly dwelling place that we talk about so often and say, You are worthy of all praise. Yeah. Oh, we just thank you, Father. We just thank you right now. I just sing to you, O oh Lord. As we see you seated high and seated on the throne, your throne, Lord, whose habitation is justice and judgment and righteousness. Yes, the scepter of your kingdom is righteousness, O Lord. And Lord, your people are rising up. So we say, Arise, O Lord, rise now. Arise. Splendor of your beauty and majesty and might.
to the Lamb upon the throne whose blood made the way for us to come into this holy place where we bless Him face to face and the angels sing you are worthy and the earth now sings you are worthy and your holy Your thoughts are higher. Lord, open up our eyes, open up our ears to know what that means. When I lay my thoughts down at your feet, all of them, oh Lord, you then come to me and you speak with me and show me your ways. That are higher, better, oh,
saved us and brought us into this holy of holies, but made us kings and priests unto our God. Holy. And they gave us decrees over us, a great inheritance. He says, fear not. Fear not, little flock. It's my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom so fear not <laughs> oh we just thank you Father we bless your holy name we lift up our voice in our hands we dance in our praise we sing we lift banners to you we shout on our beds Yes, let the saints shout aloud on their beds. Oh, yes, Lord. Fill our homes now. Fill the places, fill the cars where we are at right now. <laughs> let us shout aloud and let, you, let us know that he inhabits those praises. And Lord, when you go up with a shout, your enemies are scattered. As you arise, Lord, open our ears so that we understand more and more of this tremendous inheritance and the nature of the weapons that are in our very being. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. Indeed, they are. that we come to it never ends we don't just come to church see we're the body of Christ we are the church you've heard that so many times but oftentimes we hear things so over and over again that we forget the revelation of it and that the body the body is one body. It says in Ephesians, Colossians, Corinthians. As a matter of fact, last week, we, I believe we talked about that over and over again. Paul, to all of them, said it's one body, one body. But members in particular with all strengths and all parts are precious, all of them. And he, we're reminded <coughs> that we don't go to church he never said you go to church. The scripture never, you can't find that. It doesn't make sense in the original language. It says that Jesus is the head of the body, the ecclesia, or the church. It's a community. It's a body. But this body is so magnificent as we're reminded that we have something that the kings of old did not have. See, Jesus stood before the Father after he was resurrected with the blood that was shed 
in the Holy of Holies like a lamb. And it satisfied the penalty for us. That is an amazing thing. That means we have access into the Holy of Holies of Holies of Holies. And we're in Him. One body. One faith. One Lord. One baptism. He's shifting with everything that's happened this, this year. And, it, and, it, and I believe this. I know the Lord knew this was going to be a difficult year. It's difficult because we've been taken out of our comfort zone. And praise the Lord because we have now... We are now postured for an amazing, an amazing explosion of the Spirit of God in the earth like never before. But you see, because we're in Christ and we're in Him, who all power in heaven and earth was given unto Him. Think about that. And you're in Him, joint heirs. There's a responsibility that has come to us. There's a responsibility for us to literally take action. Now people say, well, what, what, what do you mean? We're supposed to be passive. No, we're supposed to, we're supposed to be aggressively blessing God and releasing the sounds of praise to him. If you read Psalm 149, when that happens with the high praises of God in our mouth, the two-edged sword in our hand, he executes vengeance on the nations and corrections on the people. He binds kings. Puts no, puts nobles in fetters of iron. He sets ambushments. We'll talk about that in a second. It's amazing, and and it executes the judgments written, as well as give him blessing and honor. Yes, from our praise. And w- when we look at this and what is in us, our weapons are not carnal but mighty through God. And and think about what that means. The men of old could not say that. They said God is mighty. But we are actually in Christ who has all power in heaven and earth who we're in. And he actually has that authority that as we operate in him, that we are actually releasing that in the earth as it already is in the heavens. People say, oh, well, that doesn't make sense. This is our position. Our inheritance is the kingdom. And uh, just to remind you that the word dominion means all authority and power. Well, in Daniel chapter 7, verse 27, Daniel was actually in the heavenly realm, in that place. And one of the creatures told him that the kingdom and the dominion, the power and authority, and the greater of the kingdom, the ever-expanding majesty of the kingdom, would be given to the people of the saints of the Most High God. If we have this type of inheritance, then we have a responsibility to be citizens and act as citizens of a holy nation that's base and center is in the heavenly realm. Even Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 says, You have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, in the company of innumerable angels. You are in the world, but you're strangers of it. And Jesus even prayed, Make them one, make us one. Make us all one, like Father, you and me, and I and them. Make them in us, in, in them and me, and I and them. It is all coming together as one, that we have nothing to fear. That does not mean not be wise, because it gives the spirit of wisdom. It means that we do not cower and wait to see what happens. We are the ones that begin to hear from heaven as we've talked about that process of legislating the the will of the Lord and the words out of heaven in a circumstance all the way into tangible things. And right now we have that. But see, some of the things are peculiar that he may call us to do. They don't fit our culture. They don't fit of the way we were brought up. Well, That's why Isaiah said we have to sometimes forget the form of things and see what he says. See, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of, he says, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You know, I grew up in a Methodist church. It used to scare me thinking heaven was going to be just like that. (laughs) I said, I don't know if I really want that. Well, praise the Lord. found out, no, it's not. Heaven is not a big, long church service. It is a whole different culture where the weapons, the glory, the light is so much more magnificent. It even says, uh, the scripture says that what are the devices of man in that place? Nothing. We, we have mighty, literal weapons in the, for the pulling down of stronghold 
through God. It is amazing. We've been made kings and priests unto our God. And sure, we love the adoration. We love the presence of the Lord. And He loves that. He also loves when we pick up our inheritance and say to these things that are going on, that's enough. No. But as a single voice, this is why there is so much coming against the church. They do not want a single voice. And right now, even in the, even in right now, it happens at the beginning of November, a chance for us to be a single voice in the natural realm under the natural laws. But it's not going to stop there. So wake up, exercise that. But when we come together as one voice in the heavenly realm, it changes everything. It does. And that's the faith that's rising up in us, wanting to know more. That's called seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That means his ways. And all these things will be added. And when he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. <clears throat> I'm sharing this. Uh, one of the weapons, the most powerful weapon we have that when you go through scripture is the praise. We say, and, and unfortunately, we've regulated that to something that builds up for a sermon. We regulated that to something that's a, a ministry on the side. In the heavens, it is everything that's, it, it actually personifies the glory of God. I don't say that because I'm a musician. I say that because I read, I read the scripture and saw that. And I find myself singing new songs all the time. I find myself lifting up my hands. I find myself blessing the Lord and singing, making melody. I find myself blessing and then there are times I find myself shouting. But this is, <laughs> that's because of as we grow and we develop and we know our dwelling place, that's a natural response. It's like, if you jump in the water, you're wet. You, you, you wake up and you know you're in the heavenly realm and that faith becomes the reality, not the things we see because we walk by that, not by what we see. It's a natural response. And so in this place, we find that we're in the earth, a nuclear bomb is quite powerful. But in the heavens, nothing's more powerful than the glory of God. And that's why it says, you know, Isaiah says, keep saying, he said, we've been repeating it, rise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It didn't fall, it rises upon you because the kingdom of God is in you. As you are in him, he's in you. It is an amazing exchange. And the time has come where we begin to exercise that which is in our hands, that which is of our authority, that which is we can do and release that sound. Because God does go up with a shout the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. And we do it because we're kings and priests unto our God, because we're one voice. And we've heard from heaven that it's time to rise up and say no, because his kingdom come on the earth, his righteousness be on the earth as it is in the heavens. And we bring into agreement they say, oh no, this is something God does. He already did it. He did it through his son on the cross and gave us the power to become sons. The power, he gave us the right to be sons, to come into the Holy of Holies. He gave us the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, but not to rejoice so much in that, but to rejoice in the fact that our names are written in the Lamb book, Lamb's book of life. This is us. He told us this, you're a chosen generation. You're a holy nation. You're a peculiar people. You are a royal priesthood, a king priest, set apart to show forth the praises of him who's called you out of darkness. To show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. It's time for us to lift up a shout. I'm going to give a couple small examples. And I'm telling you up front, something that excites me no end is that even the examples of Jehoshaphat, of, of Joash, of Joshua, of David, these men did not have access into the Holy of Holies like we do. Their dwelling place really was the earth. And, and by the grace and mercy of God, they had, they had favor. But us, we're covered our sins are obliterated as we walk in sanctification. We actually have the actual inheritance right now. And it's time to exercise that. And we come from the heavenly place. Because that's where we're seated with this authority. 
This is where our faith rises up of who we really are. They didn't have that. And if you're wondering, is it, this sounds crazy. Well, of course it's peculiar. We walk by faith and not by sight. But even uh, Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14, Awake as though we've been in a slumber. Awake and Christ will give you light. And it goes on to say, because it's time, the redeeming the times, because the days are evil. That's written in Ephesians chapter 5. We are there. So I look back and I look at, I look at, I've done studies, I've looked at these men that would use, like, I just take, uh, for example, um, I'd look, I just was quoting that about Psalm 149, laying that they would, they would sing upon the beds, the saints of God, that's Psalm 149, verse 5. And I so I'd say, okay, yeah, I sing upon my bed. And I would look at that, you know, I'd, <laughs> I'd actually look at that word and I'd, re I'd, I'd go back to the original language and I'd say, well, that's interesting. They translated this word, uh, rana, as singing. And I looked at it and I didn't see anything that that word meant anything about singing. It meant literally shouting exceedingly, literally with trees, you know, like uh, <laughs> crying out and, and, and with voices of proclamation, not only of joy, but of triumph. Laying on their bed, just wow. I don't know if you've ever done that, but that's exactly what that word is that that the saints of God would be lying with in their beds laying on their beds singing they would sing upon their beds aloud that's what that means and then it goes on the high praises in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to bring vengeance upon the nations in other words corrections on the people it's amazing and so I, I looked down and I looked at these words that we've translated into nice you know singing you know nice and I couldn't find it it was all I mean these things were amazing what would be taking place these were amazing releases of glory of excitement of authority in the earth and we say well that's just emotions that's in the flesh hey the man weapons of man they pick it up and they fire it well weapons of our warfare are not carnal they're mighty through God we literally lift up a shout and so I, I, I say this that Jehoshaphat in chapter in second chronicles chapter 20 when he was didn't know what to do and got the word from the Lord that whole process of bringing crying out and having a solution that when they heard the word of the Lord that they weren't going to have to fight that they had the victory they began to sing and that same word this word rene or Rina, I can never say it, Rinan. It's very close to the other one. It also means shrilly, like 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 almost covering your ears. And it says that also making proclamations of triumph. They were doing this just at the word of the Lord. They didn't even face the enemy yet. But the next day they went out and faced the enemy, and when they came to the enemy, they began to sing. No. I, I, I not sing like our culture understands it. They began to sing Renal, you know, you know, letting it out and just screaming and saying yes and proclaiming victory and triumph. They let it out, and when they did, God began to set ambushments against the enemy. <laughs> and they had the victory. Not only did they have the victory, they got the they got the spoils. They, they took everything. That's amazing to me. I just say, oh my gosh, Lord, this is amazing. And we want, it's hard for us to imagine that, that in that corporate one, that God did these things. And, you know, another one we, we remember, I'll go down, let's see, since I got a couple more of these words, I'll just share with you. Uh, oh, I like this one, because <laughs> I'd go all night. If I didn't have these notes here, I'd tell you what, I could talk all, all night about these things. But um, in Psalm 47, it says, clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. This is a cool word here. Another shout on, with triumph. In other words, when we face it, we declare and with rejoicing and with joy, triumph. And here's what's amazing. It's a roar. That word ruah, 
clap your hands, all your people. You remember the old song, clap your hands, all your people. What, we'll, uh, <coughs> we probably have a different sound to it now. Clap your hands, all your people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. That word shout is ruah. And ruah, it's an interesting, it means, it, it, ruah is a sounding of an alarm. It's a blowing of an alarm. It, it, it can be that. But it's also a joyful, triumphant sound that's being made. And when they say it, when they shout with this, they have such confidence of victory. And that sound, the description of that sound, is it's so loud that it splits your ears. And I know maybe one or two out there are saying, oh, well, that just sounds not right. Of course not, because our culture is not the kingdom culture. This is what took place. And in it, when they, when they would shout unto God with a voice of triumph, the enemy panicked. There, as a matter of fact, many times throughout Scripture, they'd say, we heard that sound of joy, we heard that sound of triumph coming from their camp, and they knew that the Lord was with them. It drove them away. It drives the enemy away. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then so, but with full confidence, we clap our hands and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. And then uh, one of my other favorite words is this, is, the, is when you go down in Psalm 47, I know I say it all the time because I, I like blowing the trumpet, I guess. It's, it says that God goes up with a ruah, a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. And when you put that together, both of them, it means the word teruah, that God actually goes up with teruah. And teruah is also ear splitting. It's also a joyful, triumphant sound with absolute confidence. But the difference is it has the absolute clanging and blowing of trumpets. Yeah! That's a, a teruhito. That would be ter, terua and a little terua in Spanish. <laughs> so anyway, but imagine putting that together. That's terua. That that sound when the God would go up with that note, He would literally rise in the, these things. It, it, it's amazing. The, if you knew that in you that when we come together and release that, this is what when we've had moments like that to really come against the enemy and we had moments to lift up that sound that shout and people have sat down and they just well I just feel like just to be quiet listen people I have respected and appreciate it but we also have to recognize that I can't tell you how many times I do not feel like doing that but I know it's called of me listen this evening I was facing all sorts of technical things, testing and all this, and still, I just had to stay at peace and calm and just say, and, you know, and I said, Lord, put the desire in me. And I knew once I started playing and just talking about him, that that, that would rise up in me. Some days we just must take that step and not worry. We, we are so, sometimes I'm, I've become so self-confident at times and held back that I did not express the confidence in him according to this word we keep reading so I look at this and I look at this word of Teruwa and an example of that Teruwa was Joshua Joshua when they finally listened to that whole process went through the whole process they agreed and they decreed and then they went out and took action but they had to hold they had to self-control themselves they knew they had the victory but they had to self-control themselves they had to really hold on they didn't just blot out they were really excited that when the time came that the 120 priests with trumpets blew they lift up a shout and the walls came down that's Teruwa and Teruwa Terua oftentimes is associated with pulling down of walls or pulling down of strongholds. When I was talking about Ruah, and you like clap your hands, all you people shout Ruah to God, that often, that often comes to the point where we have, we're decreeing and declaring 
in face of the enemy, we have full confidence in what the Lord is able to do and what he's doing through us. It's a confidence in the body. And it's amazing when we see the Renal, the, cr the crying, you know, the shouts of joy making proclamation like at the time of Jehoshaphat. It literally was decreeing victory over the enemy. So all these things begin to happen and take place with these words. I kept seeing that, that same thing happen with these words throughout Scripture. That word teruah is also an amazing thing because it establishes the presence of the Lord. When David brought up the Ark of the Covenant correctly, remember Uzzah, Uzzah when they did it their own way, not according to the ways that were already there, when they did it their own way, Uzzah died. I mean, it was... Lord wanted that ark up in the tabernacle, wanted it on Zion, but they did it their own way. But when he corrected himself and, and repented and all of Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant, in them when it said they were singing and dancing, they were, teru they were in Teruah with their dance. As a matter of fact, I didn't include this, but that word halal, where you get halauya, literally means twisting and twirling, a bright shining celebration, one that's stultified, one that looks like they temporarily lost their mind. That's what halal means. It's not hallelujah, it's actually absolutely beyond imagination that someone might look at you and think you've lost your mind, like, uh, like Mich Mi Michael or Mi Michael, uh, the, the wife of David was ashamed. <laughs> and so we've come to we've come to this place where we can truly halal uya praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, all of Psalm 150, every single word, praise him on the, in the dance, praise him with the timbrels, praise him with the trumpet, praise him with the dance, singing, lifting up, praise him with the you know all everything, with the cornets, with the shofars, with the drum, everything they list in there, everything. Let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. Every one of those words is the word halal. So it's always reading hallelujah. Anytime you read that, it's literally an absolute, absolute bright shining celebration. And so we've come into this place where we're facing things that we need to have victory over the enemy now. We need to have the full confidence of God. We have to, God, Lord, I'm not going to make a political stand here. You know what you need to do. Do not get complacent of what's going around us. We have a responsibility, and it's time for us to declare victory over the enemy. This darkness coming against righteous people, this, this pedophilia things, this, these unrighteous things that are taking place in the nations, the, these terrorist groups that are rising up, it is time to say, well, we've got to have a victory. But we can't do it according to our own old ways. We must rise up in the faith that we are truly seated in the heavenly places and that we are truly a holy nation, a chosen generation, that we walk in Him who has all authority and power in heaven and earth. And we have it in us to pull down the strongholds with our actual shouts of praise. It is amazing. Those days are coming where our gatherings, yes, they can gather and we get edified, but look at the time we're in. You no, know, these gatherings, these psalm assemblies are coming together. When Joel blew that, when that trumpet was blowing in Joel chapter 2, and I'm speaking really by the Lord right now, those trumpets weren't, you know, we. we Blow the trumpet in Zion. No, it was not a praise song. Those were alarms that were sounding off. Those were alarms that motivated the people to come. Why? Because there was an army so great coming to destroy them. That's what that's about. Read it. But in verse, I believe around verse 11 or verse 14 in, in Joel chapter 2, it says, But the Lord... I mean, it took all that time to describe how terrible the enemy is. We can spend a lot of time describing all the things that are going on. But I'm saying this, that in that verse, that when, when and that alarm was sounded and they came together, it says, the Lord uttered his voice. And that word voice, call, and that word sound, he let out. There was a roar. He uttered his voice before the armies. We know there's a trumpet sounding. 
But we, it's not a time to be complacent. It's a time to pick up and say, my goodness, I am the royalty of him. I am in him who has all power and authority. But what can one man do? Oh, plenty. Because the kingdom of God is in you. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And it's the time we lay down our ideation. We say, regardless of the differences we may have in our faith, we know that Jesus Christ is Lord, Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary. He, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He left his throne and his blood was the, made a covenant. And those who claim it and believe on it have everlasting salvation, everlasting forgiveness, everlasting, I mean, a constant cleansing and sanctification in him. We know that. We agree on that. But in him, he's also the king of kings and the king of glory. And there are times where he says, my people, my brothers, my sisters, rise up and agree and loose that sound. That is in you. That, that's in us. It's so amazing. And all these men, that, like I said before, these men, <coughs> Joshua, Samuel, David, Samson, <laughs> Jehoshaphat, Joash, none of them are in the holy, were in the Holy of Holies during all this time. None of them had access, only the high priest, and sometimes he died because he wasn't right. But you, you have access total. We have nothing to fear if we bind together and loose and say no. It will cause us to rise up in action. And I know this. I am not a politician. I know to speak, but I know that beyond any shadow of a doubt that right now we have the opportunity to literally take even those of us here that are voting citizens, legal citizens voting, that say vote, that we take it now. There's something special about that right now because we are truly coming as one voice. It's time. But that's just an exercise of a shadow of what really our praises can begin to break down, pulling down strongholds and principalities, letting ambushments be set, <laughs> even in your own lives. And when we do that, he cares for us. It flows all over us. It breaks fear because the shout brings a confidence that our God is able and he's faithful, our Lord. And remember this. When we release it, because we're seated in that heavenly place, Ephesians 2, 6, that when we release it, it literally, because we're seated there, yet in the earth, it's flowing from the heavens. We, into the earth, literally, the sound of his kingdom right from that heavenly realm because of who we are. People say, well, I don't feel that. I'm waiting to die to get to heaven. Well, find that in Scripture and show it to me and I'll believe it with you. I'm finding how he's empowered us. I'm finding where we are in him. I'm finding him that to live is Christ and to die is gain. I'm finding those that love their life not even unto death. I'm finding that that says this, that we, he's already, we've been baptized in his death, raised in his resurrection and his likeness, and we are to rule and reign with him. And that's exactly where we are today. That is exactly where we are and in the greatest of joy in the shouting of joy with confidence we can say no more to this no more to this no more so lord we just thank you god so for a few minutes for a few minutes if you can just begin to lift your voice and hands and, and let a shout even come out and that which you've been battling Look at it and with full confidence, praise God with a loud voice, not just cower. He says, I've given it to you now. He's releasing it into you even now. He's releasing it even now. Lord, do it now. Lord, we just say, thank you, Lord. You are. Hallelujah, God. We just bless your holy name, Father. So we, ha, ah, hallelujah. Oh yes, 
Let it rise. Let it rise. His kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven in power and demonstration through the saints who he has given us as an inheritance this tremendous gift of the kingdom. And we know that our captain of our hosts, Jesus, the head of this amazing body, is Lord and Lord of lords, King of kings in both heaven and earth. And we just bless your holy name. Let it rise. Let God go up with a shout, the Lord, with the sound of the trumpet, and let it with confidence. Yes. it as we lift up a shout and follow your word and your order that the strongholds as you rise up in them the strongholds that even over their lives are breaking even sickness and illnesses stomach ailments being broken now oh freak up of our habits oh freak up our sitika oh lord even those that struggle with certain people in their life that they feel they have no power around them. That stronghold, that unholy tide being broken even now. As you lift up a shout and love fills it. What was anguish and sorrow is now becoming joy and freedom. Yes. We just thank you for Father as we lift up that shout and say, ha, 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 glory, hallelujah. We just bless you, Father. Oh, we just come to that heavenly place, lifting up a shout, and he begins to set ambushments against our enemies. But I know there's more. <coughs> He's calling the body of Christ together in these days in a unique and a new way. He's pulling us out of old and doing something new and empowering us. There's going to be so many things that are happening. But one of the things in these last few weeks and many months, I should say, that when the Lord shared with me, he says, pull everybody together that you've been doing conferences with around the world and release a shout. I knew what he meant, but I know more now what he means because he is getting ready to pull down. I mean, literally through us. Our weapons are mighty in, in through God through him through God in the pulling down these strongholds he's waiting on us and he's rejoicing that we're hearing from heaven and we're starting to agree and we're starting to even change and 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 decree and take and begin to get ready to take action commit to it that as we begin to come together and as one voice begin to say no to these things that righteousness will not prevail in the Psalms it says shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with him no well we have ruah we have teruah that pulls down strongholds and we decree it and that scripture also goes to say and those 
that carry out mischief and literally make laws to cover it. They hide it under the sacred rule of law. Have we not been seeing that? The scripture says, it will not have fellowship with him. That does not belong here. No. Because the kingdom is to come on the earth as it is in the heavens. And so we're beginning to unlock these keys. He's ready to destroy even the, the strongholds and the palaces of the trafficking. Even the ones that have not been discovered, he's going to uncover. He does these things. I didn't think I was going to say this, but in chapter in Amos chapter 2, verse 2, there's a reference of that one a fire coming against Moab, a whole region, and it's divided up into other in regions. But there's a place in there where it says that he will devour the palaces of Kiriath, which means the buildings, the palaces. But when you look at this whole structure, and he'll do this in the midst of the shout and the sounding of the trumpet, and he'll do this. He'll destroy these things and devour them. These are the places of the incestuous. These are the places of the sacrifices to, uh, to, to idols and gods. These are the things that would be uncovered. And I said, my gosh, that's, that's not then. That's now. It, it's both. But, and he said, yes, I will do that. We're talking about us releasing the sound of his glory, blessing him, and literally seeing our weapons are not carnal but mighty in God in the pulling down of strongholds. They are not like man's devices. They are so much more. And I encourage you. I encourage this. We'll, we're gathering on the 30th. We gather, we gather pretty often here. But I encourage on the 30th. I believe that is just the beginning. I believe that is just the beginning of what is going to be taking place around the earth. But when nations, 12 nations that are committed, and Lord, we just thank you for the technology to make it happen, let it happen, to simultaneously all around the world, all different time zones, saying no to these things, what can happen? If a few men that did not have access into the heavenlies can lift up a shout and the walls come tumbling down, what is it that we have in us and this is the things that hell they that Satan and all them they do not want us to come to the recognition of these things and I do hear in the spirit I do hear I hear whispers I can hear it in the spirit that it says it kind of says back to me well oh, you need to be careful because you might have attacks I have Teruah I have I will release that sound. We're releasing that sound, and it's a wall of protection also. We do not fear. Our inheritance is the kingdom. So rise up. Rise up, warrior. Rise up. Yes, there are things that, oh, brother, I know. I could tell you all day long of things that I've had to struggle and battle through. I know. But nevertheless, <clears throat> this is still in you. It is time. I just wanted to encourage you. And I know he's healing some of you even now. It's just time. Hallelujah. Can you sense it? It is time. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name, O oh Lord. We bless your holy name. Will come to 
the rising of your bride. Oh, rise for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon. What you endured and you gave us the right to be called citizens in the household of God. That by the blood you shed and making covenant that you obliterated, carried our sins to the grave and defeated death in the grave. Who are we to stand back question your words who are we you said and we compare it to these mighty men of God of the Lord image of you and you said greater work shall you do and I know that you were referring to yourself but you were and you are the greatest and you're referring to all of these things and we stand on something here that you're releasing now Lord we know it's greater Yet you are the head. You are the preeminence over this, your body. To the Lamb upon the throne. Blessing, glory, and honor. And to the Blessing, all glory, all honor and power to you. We bless your holy name, O Lord. Be ready because it's <laughs> it's time. Psalm 102 says. The appointed time, the set time has come for Zion. We dwell in Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, in the company of innumerable angels. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. I'll leave a bit of the information for October 30th here. But on the website, there's videos and there's going to be numerous options. Prepare your heart because we let confidence arise. Let that Ruah rise up in you. As a matter of fact, let the Ruah rise up in you.